Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teachers. I'm Tash and in today's extra special episode for Anjuna Deep, I'm going to be doing a sort of track breakdown of my latest release for You My Love. So without further ado, let's jump right into the project file and see if we can't make some sort of sense of the madness that exists within. Now, there are a couple of disclaimers I'd like to make before starting this little deep dive, and the first of which is that the track which you will be hearing today may vary a little bit compared to the official release, and that is because the version that is out now came from a project file that was sufficiently reduced in the amount of channels, and I'd started bouncing everything down to audio, and in many ways it would just be really dull to look at. So the project file I'm showing you today is of a version, um, about nine versions before the song that it will be officially out. And this is sort of the last point where in which everything was on separate channels. So there may be things in here that aren't in the original or vice versa and yada, yada, yada. So let's just jump right in. Now, one of the most important things to point out about this song before we start is the mood of the song comes largely from the key that we're in, or should I say the mode that we're in. If you were to throw this track into mixed in key, for example, to try and work out what key it is, I'm sure it will say that it's G major. However, we're not really in G major, we're in fact in C Lydian, and I think we only get the G major chord twice uh, in all of these individual little pieces. We only get it twice as a sort of respite. So because we hover mainly on C as our root, what we have done, in fact, is inferred that we are in C Lydian. Okay, that over and done with. Let's just jump right in. So the first thing that I even did before I had anything else in the project file was I'd come up with this chord progression, which was C major 7 and a B minor 7. And then putting that on an acoustic guitar, I ended up with this. And this was, in many ways, all I had when I first started this project file. And at the time, I didn't have this filter on it. Like, for some reason, I've put in the, the official version. And to me, that is just a beautiful, um, despite being very simple, it's a really beautiful chord progression because it just feels... Oh, I don't know how to describe it. To me, what it feels like, especially when you throw in these little extra chords that I've got, I've got an E minor 9 there. Like, if we listen to that quickly, it feels... It feels expensive. It feels like you're driving a, a 50s Porsche through Tuscany at sunset. You know, it feels like something that you probably can't afford. And that's what I loved. I loved that feeling of just how leathery it felt and how kind of like mahogany. Um, long story short, the chord progression in many ways is what inspired the rest of the song. I just had these two chords and that was it. C major 7, B minor. Well, it was a B minor 7 as well, actually. Let's just throw that in for good measure. Okay, so the next thing I did would have definitely been just adding a kick drum. So at that point I was like, okay, cool, I like the guitar. Lovely, let's take the loop off. And at this point I probably would have said, lovely, that's fantastic. Um, what we need now is a bass line. And around the time of making this song, I just discovered the plugin company TuneTrack. And I think a day or two before I made this song, they just released this plugin, which is called Easy Bass. And for any of you who are curious to learn more about this plugin, I do have a video over on my Tash Ch Teachers channel on a sort of review slash tutorial of how to use this and some kind of fun use cases. But what this is in a nutshell is having an expert bassist sat beside you at all times, being able to help you uh, play the exact rhythm you want for the specific chord progression you have in mind. And you can see here that key-wise, I had to put it in G major because we only get to pick between majors and minors. But anyways, so by adding this bass line and a quick note as well is the rhythm that this bass is playing is a rhythm that I have created called Simple Latin. And it's this rhythm. And that rhythm is um, something which I played on my bass guitar and plugged into the, the jack import. And all I did with the audio tracker was I had the audio come through, which basically it 
converted the audio to MIDI because I have to say, although I know what I like, I definitely can't necessarily play what I like on a lot of instruments. So the tone of the way I was playing the strings or the the little clicks and buzzes and stuff, this allowed me to take what I had in my mind and apply it to any chord. So once we then had that rhythm in here, all I had to do was just fill in the chords that uh, are happening in the guitar. So we've got a C here. Let's just skip to say the, f the beginning bit here. We've got a C. And because I've said that the chord is a C, it will play it as a C. Whereas this is the same pattern I played on the bass guitar, but it's been applied to the B minor chord. And it goes on as such. Uh, so that was the bass line I added. Uh, wonderful feeling. We were talking earlier about the G major chord as well, going to that home section. You can see this green chord here is really that first time we get to feel that resolution. So, you know, on the second drop where we've got the flutes, we get back to that C major 7. We've got the B minor 7. We've got a C major 7 again, but instead of going to that B minor this time, now we go to this, oh, just delicious G major. And that's something that's really lovely about making songs in a specific mode is that when you then do throw back that parent scale, that one chord to the to the parent scale, you can get this really like emotive feeling of like, oh, I knew we were coming here, but I just wasn't expecting it to be now. Okay, long story short, at this point, I would have most definitely added these congas and bongos, which also made by Tune Track are this fabulous plug-in Superior Drummer. Uh, see how long it takes to open this time. Now I love Superior Drummer because of the amount of control I have over the specifics. So you know I can go in and I can edit the, the specific notes if I wanted to, but I can also just do this wonderful thing where I can basically click on a sound and I can say just add some notes and it will now I mean, I, I've actually got a MIDI channel in it now, so that won't make sense. But I can basically just say, give me more of the timbal, or give me more of the cymbal. And you can pick how many notes you have, blah, 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 blah. But what's also really cool about this is the mixer, which allows you to, within it, sort of group things together and using a lot of really nice insert effects, just create some kind of fantastic sounds that maybe you wouldn't do if you were... Uh, mixing or adding effects in your DAW. There's something to be said for good effects in a plugin. Um, so anyway, I've got this congas and bongos and they are very velocity controllable. So what I'd done was I'd taken a velocity MIDI controller here and despite having the same MIDI pattern throughout the whole song, what I've done is I've just um, I've just ridden that MIDI mid section and also the high one. So what I've done here we go to the max out, you can see that I've basically just brought down, you can see here that I'm bringing the control of that down. So, uh, wait, max out, note velocity. Well, we're on this middle velocity section anyway. This just meant that I could, with my, um, what do you call it? The, the Not the mod wheel, yeah, the mod wheel. I could basically dial in the expression as if somebody was playing it live. And I've done that on both the bongo and the congas. And around the same time as making this song, I was also getting quite into then just overall volume riding. It doesn't look very interesting on this channel, but what I would do is once I had a good working mix is I would just attach some sort of fader on a MIDI keyboard or maybe the mod wheel to the volume. And overall, I would just listen through to the channel or listen through to the chat, uh, the track and on every channel, try and add in a bit of humanized uh, volume increases and decreases. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so then I also added some shaker and, and a clave. And there you go, you got your classic Tash percussion sound. And a few more sounds here that I don't think is really that interesting to get into. However, we now get to this 808 conga section. And what's quite lovely about this conga, I think it, as a sample it would actually be called an 808 tom. Uh, I've bounced it now. But what I've done is I've just pitched them to be, uh, I'm assuming, a C and a G, which just is the root and the fifth of the C major chord, which just really helps to... Boop, boop, boop. It helps to really ground us in the fact that we're in C major as the root, therefore C Lydian. Um, once I'd done that, I felt like it'd be quite nice to add alongside all of this very organic sound, some sort of 
digital-ish sound and that's where I ended up taking the same 808 Tom but applying it on a sampler and playing in this rather fun um, repetitive pattern Boop. All that is is just playing playing the notes up and down the particular chord at that particular section there is this lovely bit here where there's a bit of anticipation where it almost comes in too early if I bring the effects in it's about to happen now love this bit and um, that just continues on and I think for some reason in the final version I removed all of these notes. So let's see what it sounds like without that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's the first time we get the vocal. Um, okay, so we've got these drums, fantastic. Bass line being played on the easy bass. At this point I also added some, this, this arpeggiation. Let's skip forward a little bit. This lovely little guitar arp is actually from a contact uh, plugin called Electric Sunburst Deluxe. And if we crank the volume on that, you'll see how lovely of a sound this is. And what's cool is you can literally just put in whatever chord you want. Let's loop it on that for a sec. But you can also then choose the voicing of it. So I could change here to say, give me a root of fifth and a ninth. Or just give me a root a tenth, a twelfth plus a fifth. I think I'd gone for just the root one. Um, this is a fantastic tool as well. Oh, and of course, this brings us to the keys. So we have here a lovely lounge lizard patch. Uh, after making this song, I then got Keyscape, and I think I probably would have used Keyscape now, but this is a, a very simple little pattern I made. I think I recorded this. Did this simply on a little MIDI keyboard. And what I did was I just copied and pasted that across and I just adjusted the notes so that they were of the next chord. So we just took this was the this was in reference to a C major seven. And then I just moved the notes down to be a B minor. Quite lovely. It's exactly the same MIDI, just shifted position of the notes. And that, of course, then ties in very nicely with the other sounds. And you've also got this underneath, this whirly shot, this little riff. And what they are, are... And in a lot of my tracks, I will add these things that happen, say, every four bars that on their own aren't... They don't tie the track together, but they sort of exist to serve a, like um the purpose of just being a theme, that everything else that happens, happens around them. Or they, because the, the, the meaning of these particular sounds changes depending on what else is playing around it. So as we start the song, these serve the purpose of just being sort of like little fill pieces. So we listen to it as it comes in. It's the first melodic thing we get with the acoustic guitar. Lovely. And then we get one with the B minor. So it hasn't changed, but the chords around it have changed the meaning. But then we get the chords, like the key. Lovely. And then we get the different chord, and again, that whirly in the lead haven't changed. So everything else is, uh, it's, there's this wonderful thing that happens when some things don't change while other things do. Lovely. Okay, um, and these chords don't really change too much until we then get to this break. Oh, what have I done? Get to this breakdown bit here, where for the first... Oh, oh, we've crashed. Sorry, let's just turn the audio engine on again. Quick moment to shout out Bitwig for the fact that that crashed, but we're still here, you know, just loading it up again. For any of you who aren't aware of this bit of software, uh, this is Bitwig Studio, which was created by a few people who left Ableton they had differences, I guess, in, in software creation agreements, and they created this piece of software, Bitwig, which is what I am using here today. And in fact, I'm also a Bitwig certified trainer, in case anyone would like some one-to-one -one tuition on this specific piece of software. At this point, I am just rambling until we get... Ah, there we go. We're loaded again. 
Cool, so at this point we get the first G major as well. So again, the chords, but don't, it's the same pattern I had before here. But now I've changed it so that it goes into a G major. Lovely, nice sweet mood there. And we go back to another G major here. So that sort of sums up all of the keys, all of the guitar. We've got another another bit of guitar here. That, that was the Sunburst electric guitar. And we've also got this Picked Acoustic guitar, which is by the uh, Session Guitarist Picked Acoustic, which is lovely as well. You also get to pick your voicing. You can do sort of open voicings if you pick these ones with the asterisk. Oh, I probably would have used that now if I'd, if I'd had a, a choice in it after the matter. Um, so that's all of our musical elements here. Keys and whatnot and our synths. Uh, we've also got a bunch of vocal chops here. These these first ones up until here, I just recorded myself uh, singing in a falsetto. I had... And I just hard auto-tuned it with then some sort of widening, like some sort of reverb that widened it, but with a very short decay. And it's ended up with this rather odd sound that I've then added a bit of slap back to. Um, but I then chopped it and played it like a keyboard and nothing too interesting there. You know, if, if you listen to music in 2012, 2013, you know exactly what this is. Um, so that's that part. Then I also had this recording from all of these from down here are little sections. Let me just solo these little sections from an iPhone recording I did of some friends singing some music they sing at church. Some are pitched down, some are pitched up. Um, quite lovely. And in fact, although it sounds pitched up, it is a harmony of a few people singing. Very lovely. So that all ties in quite nicely with the rest of the rhythms. Uh, where it starts to get quite interesting, though, is these woodwinds, flutes, strings, and brass. And unfortunately, for some reason, I decided to get rid of the brass from the, the track. And I think, <laughs> realistically, the brass was one of the best bits. So we'll leave that for a sec. But um, as we get to this breakdown, we then have these rather delicious bits of strings, flutes, and woodwinds that come in. So if I just solo these for a sec, um, what we have here is my first attempt at trying to be a bit orchestral. So, bloody volume fading in. God, that's made it a bit of a nightmare for showing you guys this stuff. But what we have here is this lovely, thick, rich... We've got an o Let's listen to them soloed then. We've got an oboe there. We've got the clarinet below it. And the bassoon below. So if we layer them... And then we had some strings from the London Contemporary Orchestra chaps. But where this is a bit sad is that this, this section that happens here... ...originally had this incredible brass bit. I'm just going to throw in for the sake of it a little bit of reverb. But we had this brass section that existed beforehand. Now, it's important to note as well that all of these orchestral sounds were the first usage of this little bad boy. This uh, bad boy is, of course, the Rolly Seaboard, which is an incredibly expressive, what they call an MPE MIDI controller, which is, um, my, I forget what MPE stands for, multiple polyphonic expression, MIDI polyphonic expression, I'm not sure. But what it gives you is instead of just being able to press a note, let's bring the trumpet up for example, instead of just being able to press a note, you can also then, you can ride the aftertouch like you would on a good keyboard. Um, and then the way that you let go changes the, the aftertouch. But you've also then got this control which allows you to slide up, but
you can just get these incredible sounds with it. And um, I love playing with the tenor saxophone like that. Oh. Anyways, um, <laughs> best left that for the professionals. So we, we created this lovely stacked section, and in fact the flute solo on the second drop here. This is in fact one of those instruments, and the specific instruments I've been using are these SWAM engine. I think it's called Sample Modeling as a company. But um, if I just play this quickly, you can see how... idea what I'm really playing there but there's just this incredible uh, expression expressive control that allows you to come up with stuff like this and you can see if we actually go into the MIDI that that first note actually bends upwards so you can You can bend between notes, and Bitwig has this wonderful control of uh, micro micro pitch expression, where I could bend up that specific note. Anyways, um, I absolutely loved that, and that is then layered with some sort of string pattern. And this was also at the beginning of me really trying to figure out how you write parts for strings. And I think originally what I'd done was I just recorded. See if I can take the side chaining off. I think I'd probably just recorded. Uh, where's the volume control? And a bloody side chain. I'd come up with this single violin line and try to just harmonize between the two. Again, this is one of those kind of things that I'd probably rather show you. Probably rather show you on the old project file because this isn't very interesting to look at. Yeah, long story short, you've got those strings and they blend in wonderfully with the chords underneath, and especially that moment of the G major here. If we take the, the guitar, the bass line, the keys, let's get rid of the drums for a sec, and we just listen to all of these instruments. Uh, flutes and strings. Look at this moment when we get this G. This, this little burst of that home of the parent key suddenly feels very special. You suddenly have this burst of hope despite sort of like the sad vibe of it. Then you've also got down here this brass section that was muted because I think I think I probably felt like with the vocal behind it, it was a bit too much, but um, if you listen to this, I love this brass section. particularly great bit where it suddenly vibes up so we go down here and then we get this anyways I'm a little bit gutted that I removed that because instead we end up with just the vocals and the strings Anyways, perhaps I'll use that brass on another track, which then ultimately leads us to the final aspect of the track, which is the vocals. And uh, these vocals were sent to me by a good friend, and they were sort of just... Um, I, I didn't know the tempo of the vocals, um, but there was sort of like the sound of the headphones in the background, so I managed to figure out what the tempo was of the vocal, and then move some things and then warp them and blah, blah, blah. And we ended up with this really rather delicious vocal, which is layered of being one of the dry vocal and 
Mm. By dry, I mean I've added a little bit of my favorite, uh, the Kramer tape with a little bit of the slapback delay. If we turn that off. Slow, slow, slow. Down. Which is just a short bit of the slap um, with like quite a short, what have we got there? Like less than 16, 1.6. I don't even know what you call that. IPS? I don't know. Uh, milliseconds, of course. Um, cool. So we've got slow, that, and then I also layered that with a slow down, like a wider uh, reverby vocal down. one that together creates. Mm, when it decides to play this. Slow down, let it out. And of course, that reverb bit doesn't actually come in until later on in the track. So we begin the song. Slow with this very dry, to some extent, it almost sounds like she's singing into your ears, uh, which is something I love. I'm a huge fan of incredibly dry vocals because then when you do decide to make them wetter, they all of a sudden feel really wet and it means you can use a little less of that decay. Um, the last thing I'm noticing here as well is the backing vocals. And this isn't a particularly good usage of them, but this was the first attempt I used of this brilliant device here of the Hollywood backup singers. Um, I forget who makes this East-West instruments. Let's see if I can play it on the keys here. What's really cool about this is it's three of three excellent backup singers. I think one was the Pink Floyd backup singer. One was Sia's backup singer, Ariana Grande or something. And they've basically just recorded all of these. Oh, crikey. They've uh, recorded all of this uh, expressive control. Expressive control of these backup singers, but a very cool feature which I didn't end up using is this word builder section here, which, how do I get to it? Uh, one of these sections allows you to get to this word builder part. Uh, where are we? Oh, long story short, which basically allows you to write specific words and have the formant control of almost saying them with each time you press a key. Um, I think I'm going to do a specific video on this, but anyway, this has ended up creating these lovely backing vocals. Anyways, that just carries on as is. And, I mean, that's all I could really say about this track, to be honest. Um, I mean, a few things to round it off as well is this was, in many ways, my first foray into creating music with Bitwig Studio. And I think the approach that I took, coming almost from a bit of a virgin, innocent, naive view, created a song that I don't think I would have been able to make uh, the same way if I'd used Ableton, which I would have known really well at the time. And what's striking me as being quite interesting looking back at this project file with you now is how in a relatively short period of time your understanding of something can go from this to this with the right amount of passion and interest. And, uh, and it's funny to look at this project file and sort of if, if this were homework that I were grading of a student, I'd have a lot of notes for them, if you know what I mean. Anyways, I think that sort of sums up the song. And I hope that this has been of some interest and enjoyment to you watchers out there. Uh, please have a listen of the song on Spotify or whatever your favourite listening platform is. And check out the B-side, I See You In My Dreams, also. In the meantime, happy living and happy creating and all that. And I'll speak to you soon, I guess. <laughs>